I'm Luke, and this is Voyager. I had a lot of people after the build videos I made for this kind of want to know more about it, so that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to be sharing some more of the specs and details and inspiration behind this whole project. So Voyager was my senior thesis project for industrial design at SCAD. Um, and when I was deciding what to do, I really wanted to kind of go all in on a project that kind of showed all the skills I had acquired at school. So I wanted to do a bunch of woodworking because I really got into furniture design. Um, but I also wanted to do a bunch of machining with like these knobs and this control panel, which is really the centerpiece. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, but also like electronics and really anything I'd think of. And really like what it came from is I was really mad looking at all the products nowadays and how short of a lifespan they have. It seems like you buy like a coffee machine and after three or four years it just gets thrown away. There's no repairability, there's no longevity in mind. Um, and so I really wanted to like take that and flip it. Um, I also was like really interested in furniture. I kind of got a love for furniture at SCAD. Um, and so I knew I wanted to do that. While I was trying to figure out what to do, I actually restored a Motorola speaker console from the 60s that I inherited from my grandfather. And after I finished restoring that, I kind of set it up with my family and we were all listening to vinyls and hanging out. And I went like, whoa, this thing's 60 years old, 60 plus years old. and with a little bit of love and care, it sounds just as good as it did the day it was new. And so that kind of got me down the road of what's something I could make that my grandchildren could enjoy. And speaker technology get, has gotten better over time, but also like it hasn't changed that much. So there's definitely longevity in speakers. And then solid wood furniture, for whatever reason, People feel this attachment to solid wood furniture and they just don't want to throw it away. Um, I don't know if it's like the connection to nature wood gives you or what, but there's something about it and people don't want to throw it away, which is kind of ironic because it's wood, like it's biodegradable. It's not like plastic, but um, yeah, there's this trend that no one wants to throw away wood. I'll kind of just start talking about different parts of this now. Um, I'll hit on the drivers and this control panel and some of the electronics. And I'm actually going to have to do a little bit of electronic repair here in a minute. So we'll see how that goes. Now, I didn't want to just build a normal speaker. I really wanted to do something with a twist, something that... Um, had a little bit more to it. So to go with that idea of things like not lasting long and people throwing them out after a couple years, I realized like what if something boring could be the most exciting part of your day? Like what if turning something on was the most exciting thing you could do all day? And that's kind of where this idea for these magnetic knobs came from. Um, I really wanted to create like the most satisfying user experience for a product. And it turns like turning this thing on and off into almost a game that's like really fun to do. There's a whole mechanism under this control panel with magnets and that is basically what controls the amplifier. Um, so you can adjust the volume, treble and bass. And that those magnets are really strong and they squeeze against this sheet of aluminum and so it's like a really tactile, resistive feel that feels really nice. And then also you can like do stuff like this and kind of like play a game with it. In this cabinet also, I haven't finished it out still, but it's intended to be storage for separate knobs. So I made a couple different styles of these knobs to really give the whole thing a different look or feel so the idea is you can store the knobs in here and have have this panel be just like blank when no one's using it or if you don't want like your kids to mess with it or you can store different knobs in here there also is a piece of um i forget what it is uhmw u UHMF, 
I don't know. It's, it's like a type of plastic tape you can put on parts that rub and it's really slippery. And so that's on this like lip of these brass knobs to keep them from like destroying the aluminum panel. But since I've been using it, it's, it's kind of worn in really nice. And I think with age, it'll just look cooler. Cause like these tracks kind of like have a secondary line to them, which I, I really like how it looks. Um, and gosh, it's just fun to play with. Also under here, um, this vent, this little spot is a, like air intake vent. There's a little Noctua fan on the backside, so it'll pull a little bit of air through because the amp draws 300 watts and I put a bigger power supply in there. So it does generate a good bit of heat, especially when it's like turned up pretty loud. That kind of helps keep it cool. There's also like a little mesh and then I put an LED strip under here. So when you turn it on, this is also like an indicator that it's on and it's working. And then to turn it off, you just take it off the on spot and set it on the off spot and it turns off. Now you can connect the amp with Bluetooth and that's honestly how I've been listening to this speaker the most, just cause it's the most convenient. But for a while I did have a turntable I would set on here and to listen to vinyls and that's really fun too. Um, I, I kind of want to build a different version of a speaker cabinet, maybe not quite like this in the future, but one with like a built-in vinyl player and, you know, higher quality components. That, that's one thing people kind of complained about a lot, I guess, in the video, is that like, I didn't spend enough money on like, um, audio gear. I mean, I still spend a ton of money on audio gear, but the hi-fi world, like, there's really a range. And I, I couldn't afford to spend like thousands of dollars just on the speaker components. So I ended up going with these drivers and tweeters. Um, people also were like, oh, there's no sub or mid. And these drivers are the Dayton Audio Epic drivers and they're kind of new. Um, they're like an extended range subwoofer. So essentially there's two subwoofers on this thing, but they're able to hit all the notes for the low bass and then also up to the mid range. And then these tweeters are really the only tweeters I could find that like matched, um, matched up with these drivers and they're really powerful. Um, they have a lot of kick, so it really will shake the house, which is fun. <laughs> also here, these are the portholes. So I, custom designed these ports specifically for these speaker drivers along with the enclosure. The enclosure is like the specific volume for these drivers. And then it's all foamed off and I put polyfill in there. But I 3D printed these ports and it's almost like a horn and it kind of is tuned to the specific um, size of these drivers. And it just kind of helps the speaker breathe and it has a lot more range that way. But I 3D printed them and then painted them the same as the legs. The legs, people have mixed feelings about. Um, I've honestly gone back and forth on them a lot. I didn't really wanna do wood legs cause I use so much wood up top. So I decided to do these metal legs and I guess they're a play on a hairpin leg. I don't really like hairpin legs usually, but a lot of like, there's a lot of Easter eggs in this design that kind of, I don't know, reference like my nerdy hobbies and stuff and just like sci-fi movies and things like that. And these legs kind of reference like the Falcon 9 landing legs that fold out or even the, the landing legs of the ship in 2001 A Space Odyssey that lands on the moon. Um, I'm a big nerd and there's <laughs> lots of nerdy little details if you dig deep enough in this. Also, for example, the font I used on the control panel is like the Dieter Rams font um, to kind of give an homage to one of my favorite designers. A lot of the audio heads also kind of beraged me about my placement of the speakers and tweeters. And I kind of went back and forth. And to be honest, it's a compromise where I put them. Um, I kind of wrestled with design and also making the speaker sound really good. 
I ended up putting them here because honestly, the, the sound difference isn't really noticeable to 99% of people. Um, but again, it's not perfect. It's, it's a compromise and I wanted it to look good above all. Like I was told by someone, this has a really good quote unquote wife factor <laughs> where, um, a lot of like hi-fi speakers are just like an ugly box you have to put in a room, but this is like a centerpiece. It's like a beautiful piece of furniture that also plays music. Yeah. Also, there was an alarming amount of people who were mad I didn't play in the video what it sounds like. And how do I say this? It's a speaker. And so the audio I record coming out of this is going to go through YouTube and play on your phone speakers. So you can't hear what it sounds like, if that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I, I, I thought that was kind of obvious, but a lot of people didn't get that. Um, yeah, anyways, but trust me, it, it sounds pretty solid. It sounds better than any speaker I've ever had. Um, definitely sounds better than a sound bar or something like that. The, the first thing people notice when I play it, they're like, wow, it sounds so clear and like there's so much range and it fills the room. Um, and that's, I mean, that's the appeal of a hi-fi speaker. It really, it really just can't compete with like modern compact speakers just because of physics. Um, you just need that space for um, the sound waves to generate. Generate? Sound needs volume, basically. So Voyager actually isn't quite complete. Um, there's a little bit of interference on the treble and the volume knob doesn't go down all the way. So I found an electronics repair place near me in Addison, Texas. And they think they can help me um, redo kind of the chop job I did with the amp to get these knobs to work. And hopefully once they do that, it'll work perfectly. Oh yeah, this dip in the wood is also like a CNC feature. It acts just kind of break up the design and to show off this control panel, which I really want the centerpiece of the design to be. It kind of like makes the whole console like reach out and be like, play with me, touch me. Um, <laughs> you know, it kind of draws all the focus to the control panel, which is definitely what I wanted. Now I'll close with for now that this is like a prototype. A lot of people asked me if I was like producing these and I think it would be cool someday, maybe soon to make a few more of these or like a different version really, because I don't know, I kind of like this being a standalone piece, but I, I, I could totally see myself designing some different speaker consoles, kind of drawing from this design. Um, but I, I like it being a one-off, like it's a really special project to me. But also it's a prototype, like th there's there's little problems here and there with it. It looks really good, but, but problems with the audio and stuff, so I, I don't know if I'll ever sell it, because um, it, it is a prototype, it's not like a, it's not like a finished product, but yeah. So now I'm gonna take out this amp in the back and take it over to the electronics place and I'll see if they can help me out. Like I said, I wanted the back to also look nice. So if you wanted to put it in the middle of a room, it would still look good. Um, but also it's, it's mainly for up against a wall. These two sides are sealed and in here is the volume for those big drivers. And then in this area is where all the electrical guts are. Like I mentioned earlier, there's an exhaust port here with a really quiet Noctua fan. So it just pulls air through. And when you turn it on, this also flips on. So I'm gonna pull off this back um, and I'll show you all the inside with the electronics and everything a little bit. So there are one, two, four, six. There's eight bolts that hold on this back panel that I have to take off. Um, and they all have threaded inserts. Um, and then this fan also detaches. So I'm gonna undo these. And it just pops out like this. And then I just have to detach the fan. And there's that. So this is what the inside looks like, all the guts. So in here, I have the amp, 
I have a power supply. I also had to switch out um, the stock fan in this power supply for a silent Noxua one, Noxua one too, um, just because if you flip it on, I want it to barely hum and I don't want fans to be whizzing. I put a bunch of heat sinks on the amp because it did have some problems with overheating when I had it up all the way for a while, um, but that fixed that problem entirely. There's two crossovers, one for each channel, um, and then there's a resistor here to allow that on-off switch to work. And under here is the bracket with the potentiometers and the wires that lead to this amp, and also there's tracks for these magnets so they don't flop around if they're not attached. This is kind of what that mechanism looks like when I move the knobs around. It's very tedious getting everything out of here because it's pretty tight. It feels more like I'm working on a car than a piece of furniture, but that's kind of cool. So this crazy contraption is how it works. So I'm going to take the amp over to them and see if I can't switch it out. So I got the amp back and it looks awesome. This is such a better job than I did. Um, so huge shout out to Azar, Pixel, and Addison. Uh, they really helped me out here. And now I just need to throw it back in here. I did have a little bit of trouble here getting it back in. Those tracks that the magnets fit in didn't want to quite line up. So I had to play with it for quite a while, but I finally got it to work just right. All right, I'm gonna try it out for the first time. Oh, I think it's off too. Okay, this is better. Anyways, um, yeah, yeah, it's all put back together and I'm really happy with it. The guys at the AV shop really did a good job fixing it up. Um, and it's awesome. Like I've been done with this project for almost a year now and it never really was finished because the, the whole amp was screwed up, but now it, all this works perfectly and there's no problems, um, it's, it's really exciting. It feels like it's finally done. It hasn't been done at all. So now I can listen to songs with zero problems and it's really awesome. Um, yeah, and if you have any other questions I didn't answer, um, I'd love to answer them in the comments. So let me know what you think. Um, but that's it for now and I'll see you guys next time.